Good evening, good evening, and welcome to our Tuesday night call. <clears throat> Tonight we're going to put together like a little book for you, and the book is going to be each week for the next three or four weeks, we're going to take one conversation and take it to the next level. Tonight's going to be the first conversation. We're going to log that conversation, keep track of it. Next week, we're going to do the second appointment. The week after that, we're going to do the third appointment. And if it doesn't, if we're not getting the person signed up and it's going to take one more week to do it, then it's going to go to four weeks. So when you're all done in the next four weeks, you will have your own little library of one, two, three, four contacts in a row, hopefully covering every possible conceivable situation where you've got a reference to the whole process from beginning to the middle to the end. And with that thought in process, I want to thank Barbara from Canada, who has graciously volunteered, I love that word, volunteered, Barbara, uh, to, to work with us for the next few weeks. Barbara, are you there? I'm here. Wonderful. Okay, if it's okay with you, Barbara, Let's get started, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, Barbara and I are going to start, and we're going to do this on the basis of she was a um, lead that I, I received, and I'm, I'm giving her a call, and she doesn't know me, and I don't have um, anybody to use as a referral or a recommendation. I'm just calling her. It's just, that's all there is to it. So, ring, ring. <clears throat> Hello? Hello? Barbara. Yes? Barbara, this is John. This is John. And I was giving you a quick courtesy call because I noticed on the Internet that you had filled out some information, that you wanted some no-obligation information, you know, about working from home and making supplemental income. And to put you at ease, I'm not a salesman or telemarketer, and I'm not going to ask for any money. I'm just returning your request for a call and the information. So... With all due respect, perhaps you could let me know a little bit about what you're looking for, Barbara. How can I help you? Well, I'm not really sure what I'm looking for. I um, I was recently uh, laid off from work due to uh, downsizing. And um, I do have a, a small business. I do, but I have lots of time because I've ran that business with working full time. So I do have some time, and I just thought it would be nice to do something something else. Okay. And when when you say uh, uh, you were laid off of work, um, what, what kind of uh, uh, occupation are you in, Barbara? Well, I was working in a hospital. Oh, okay. Okay. Have you done that for a long period of time? Yeah, a long time. A long time. I'm curious, in working in a hospital, did you enjoy your work while you were there? I enjoyed many parts of it for many years. The last couple of years were very, very stressful because I was in management and um, it was, um, yeah, very stressful. Unions were very strong and, yeah, it was tough. Okay. Um, if you had a chance to go back, you said you're laid off, would you go back or would you prefer to look for something, a new challenge? No, I don't want to go back. I I, um, I couldn't go back to nursing because I have a bad back, and I don't want to get back into management again. Okay. Okay. When you say a bad back, is that a job-related injury or just something that came on through the, the job-related? Okay. Oh, that's very unfortunate. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> when you think of all of the experience that you've had, as you said, many years in working for the hospital as a nurse, You've obviously been a people person. Is that is that true? Um, to a certain degree, yes. I mean, you have to put up with grumpy old men, don't you? <laughs> grumpy old men and grumpy nurses, too. Uh, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> when it comes down to it, um, you've probably had more experience in working with, with people and their personalities because when in a hospital they're, they're, they're stressed out than probably the average person. Does that make sense? Likely, yeah. Okay, all right. So, in looking for something new, because you said you didn't want to go back, with your experience of working with people already, especially people that are maybe as stressed out as you felt, you were stressed out, okay? Um, what is your criteria? I mean, what, 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 what do you want? I'm 
really just trying to look and see what's out there. I don't, I don't really know, but I need something. I mean, there's a lot of scams out there. There's a lot of, um, you know, too good to be true things, and um, it's got to be something that I believe in. Okay. Okay. Too good to be true. You got to believe in it. Okay. <clears throat> Have you had an experience with working a business from home in the past? Well, like I said, I have another business right now, but it's um, it's like a accommodation. It's a small inn. Okay. So I run that. Okay. Do you like doing that job? Uh, I have liked it over the years, but I, I am ready to sell. Okay. So you have the experience and the knowledge of being and owning your own business uh, already? Yes. Okay. That's exceptional. <clears throat> when you see, use the words, it's too good to be true, and you have to believe in it, it sounds like you're a risk avoider, not a risk taker. Is, is that true? Um, not, not entirely, but, you know, I want to investigate something. You know, I can give you an example. I had a phone call the other day. Uh, some people wanted to buy something from me and offered me this phenomenal amount of money. Well, I know darn well that it's, it's a scam. Uh-huh. You know, because... <laughs> No, it just is. I just know it. Okay. So, you know, you don't get $95,000 for a timeshare that they haven't even looked into the details. Oh, goodness gracious, yes. Okay. When you said you were looking for supplemental income uh, and you're talking about being laid off and, and the other small business that you have and the stress uh, and the fact that you've done some homework already and it sounds like you're quite disappointed, um... How much has your need for supplemental income changed in the last few months? Has it gotten more significant? Uh, well, obviously, I um, sorry, my other phone's ringing. Um, obviously, the um, you know the income I was making at the hospital was very significant, and uh, you know that isn't there anymore. So. Okay. When you've looked at these other opportunities and you said they're too good to be true and you couldn't believe in it, was there anything that you looked at that got your attention? Not so far, no. Okay, all right. And what you looked at that you didn't like, when you say it's too good to be true, what was it that you heard or what was it that you experienced that disillusioned you? Well, I was actually referring to the uh, people that were trying to buy a timeshare. Oh, okay. So not really a business. It was more of a just um, a sale. Okay, all right. So in talking, you've probably had quite a few calls since you filled out this form, haven't you, from other, from other people uh, wanting to no, talk to you? I haven't. You haven't? No, I haven't. No. Okay. So you and I are the first people to talk about this? Yes. Okay, all right. When you think about owning another business yourself and you're concerned about risk, if we could structure it in such a way as you could have a free look at the business in some manner that's acceptable to you before you made a commitment or any money was involved, anything, would that first step help you to get more comfortable with whether or not you really want to try a new challenge? Well, it would, too, and also, you know, so many of the ones you're just supposed to go online and you sign up and they want your credit card right away, um, and there's no real person talking to you. Um, and, you know, if you're talking to a real person and you had, you know, you could talk to a real company, that could make a difference. Okay. <clears throat> when you said you wanted some supplemental income, are we talking a little or are we talking a lot? Well, if I could, if I could bring in about 4000 a month, that would be really, would help to replace, you know, my other income. And okay. Wouldn't replace it all, but it would, would help. And, you know, we really like to travel and things like that, so I'd really like to be able to do that more. Okay. So when you say 4000 a month, that is a whole new career to make that kind of money. And... You went to nursing school for what, two years after you went to college or something like that? 
I was three years. Three years, okay. So it took you a while to get up to that $4,000 a month, didn't it? Well, back in those, back in the early days, we didn't very, make very much, but it gradually went up and up, yeah. Okay. I, but you know where I'm going with this, don't you, Barbara? That it took you a while to get up to that $4,000, not working on the job, plus all the, the, the studying and the knowledge that you had to gain. Is, is, isn't that true? Yes. So, do you think it, it's fair to be realistic about this and say, if you want to try something new, you want a new challenge that you could make $4,000 a month, it would be a lot fairer if I said you may only make $200 the first month, or you might not make that at all if a, a situation comes up or a problem comes up that you don't know how to handle it. In other words, are you prepared to work your way up based upon your own skills, your own desire, your own commitment, because if it is your own business, you can, you're can you in total control. You know, you're the president, the secretary, the treasurer, it's all yours. But I'm trying to be real up front with you. You're not going to make $4,000 the first month. Oh, I, I realize that. It's okay. You have to build up. Uh, I realize that from my other business, but, um, you know, that's what I'd like to make eventually. Okay. That's very possible if you put in the kind of time and the kind of work and the dedication that you did to be a nurse all those years. All right? Right. Okay. And that that is okay with you? Mm-hmm. Wonderful. With all of your people skills and starting a new challenge, what skills do you think you could bring to the table to give yourself a head start in owning your own business? based upon your own experience and your own opinion? Well, I'm very organized. Okay. I, uh, I have decent computer skills. Uh-huh. I have decent phone skills. Uh-huh. Um, I'm not afraid to talk to people. Okay. Um, and I'm very persistent. Okay. I don't give up easily. Okay. How do you feel about rejection, Barbara? Um, it gets me down, but I usually get back up again in a while. Okay. All right. If I could show you how you could evaluate a business, to know what's expected of you. To be able to confirm that the business is legitimate, you're not being scammed, to show you the affordability of it, the budget, what you'd be spending for the next year to run your business, testing the business to make you sure you know what's expected of you, making sure that the support meets your needs just like the support that you had when you were in the hospital, making sure that you're not alone, and that you were going slow enough that you're comfortable, along with what's expected of you, if we could cover those issues with you up front, would you look seriously at something new? I mean, are you the kind of person that would seriously take a hard look at something? I would, yeah. I may not make up my mind immediately, but I'd take a good look at it, and I think the part, I mean, besides being a legitimate company and things like that, um, having... Um, somebody to help me would make a big difference. So you're real keen being a professional nurse, you're real keen on support. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So in this process, you'd want to make sure that you verified and confirmed that the support met your needs. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. In any business, there's a product. If I can show you how you could test the product, look at the product, try the product with no risk, 100% your money back for the product so you could try it. If you don't like it, send it back. Would that be another benefit to you? Well, that would be essential because uh, if I didn't believe in the product, I couldn't do the business. So does it make sense to you that when we speak next, if you do choose to speak, that I should show you how you could get your hands on the product and you could be testing it to make sure that it meets your needs while we're going through these other steps here and making you comfortable that we just discussed.
where you could be doing the testing while you're trying the product. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Any idea how much that's going to cost? Uh, the product would cost you approximately, oh, approximately about $39. Okay. Okay. As I said, there's no risk. You can ask for your money back. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, with your permission, my understanding is, is that you've had a long career in a hospital. You're a professional person. You've also had this, uh, extensive experience in owning and operating uh, your own small business, which you said was, which is an accommodation in. And the, the problem with your life right now is the tremendous stress that you're under and how this stress is affecting you. And I'm curious, is it affecting your family and your relationship with your family as well? Well, the stress has actually gone down a lot since I've left the hospital. Okay. All right. So then the only stress that's left is maybe his financial needs? Right. It's okay. to replace a little bit of what I lost, yeah. Okay. And your biggest concern is you want to make sure that you're making a decision that's best for you and you're not being scammed and that it's a good company and that you've got the support like you had in the hospital. Is that right? Or even maybe better support than I had at the hospital. Ah. Uh, so you weren't real happy with the support you had in the hospital? No. Okay. What was it about that support that you found disappointing? Um, the CEO would go behind my back. He would, um, somebody would come to me and ask something that I, was out of my hands, so I would go to the CEO, and um, he would say, no, absolutely not, can't do that, so I'd have to go back and say no. And uh, then they would go to him directly. He wouldn't call me into the meeting, and he would give them what they wanted. So you're looking for a relationship where everything's on the table and everything's up front and everybody knows where they stand. Right. Perfect. Okay. <clears throat> With your permission, I'd like to send you a, 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 a our first email, and it's called, If You Can I Be Successful and Working From Home and Owning My Own Business? And there's lots of questions. There's about seven of them, Barbara. And mm -hmm. these the seven questions are to help you to see if there's more answers that you're requiring that maybe these are questions that you haven't thought of that would even make you more comfortable if they were answered to your satisfaction. Okay. And that's the best way I know how to make you comfortable. Because you notice okay. we've been talking, goodness, I don't know, maybe almost 10 minutes, and have you noticed that I haven't tried to sell you anything? That's right. And I haven't asked for any money, have I? No. Okay, so if you could do what we're doing right now as a nurse, just like when you go in the room and you ask them how they feel and you, you fill out your chart, do you realize the transition from what you were doing as a nurse and your business experience isn't a whole lot different than the conversation that we've been having, just collecting information and discussing whether or not what we have fits you, just like you collected information to find out what was wrong with the patient. Right. That's what I do for a living. You have just experienced the biggest portion of what I do. You let people figure it out for, your, for themselves, just like you let the people, the patients in your hospital, tell you where they hurt and how they feel. Just like when someone comes into your inn, you ask them questions and they tell you what they want, you know, what what kind of room they want. Okay. When you walk into a room in the hospital and you see a patient, you don't walk up to them and say, oh, I know what's wrong with you. You would never do that, would you? <laughs> not likely. Not like Okay, and that's why I would not try to tell you why you should join my business. It's wrong. It's wrong in a hospital and it's wrong with you and I talking. You're going to make up your own mind based upon what fits you and what you're comfortable with, and all I'm going to do is provide you the information and let you decide what's best for you. Is that a fair bargain? Sounds good. Okay. Now, can we talk about this tomorrow? Will you have time to look at these questions if I send them to you tonight? I've got a few other things to do tonight, but I should be able to look at them in the morning. Okay. So would it be possible that we talk the same time tomorrow night as we're talking now? 
and will probably be on the phone for maybe, I don't know, 10, maybe 15 minutes at the most. Any chance you could call around 4 o'clock instead? Yes, 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock, okay. All right, all right. And our objection tomorrow night is to, is to discuss and make sure you are satisfied with the answers of this can I be successful because it's all designed to help you to be able to ask better questions to make sure you're comfortable, okay? So do you want me to fill that out and send it to you? No, no ma'am. All I want you to do is answer the questions and then when we get on the phone we're going to go through it together. And I'll, okay. I'll say question number one is this, and I'll say, how do you feel about it? And you'll tell me how you feel. And if I can't make you comfortable, if I can't lead you to the answer, if, if you don't see the benefit, then shouldn't we just stop right there, Barbara? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you see how this is all about you and not about anything else? That's right, yeah. Okay. When we get through with this process tomorrow, if you're still comfortable, then we'll go to the next step. And I'll give you a little insight as to what I do in my business to see if it is appealing to you. If you like that, then we'll start the test drive. And we'll, we'll go right down the list. Here's how you verify and confirm. And I'll show you... I probably want to look at a few things. I don't want to jump into the first thing I look at, you know. I, and you know what? The beautiful part about this is, is that the questions I'm giving you when I send them to you tonight, you can use this evaluation tool for as many businesses as you look at, whether you work with me or not. Mm -hmm. So you see the benefit in us talking around night, so you learn how to use this tool? Yeah, you sound like a really nice person, but I'd like to really check out a few things. With all due respect, I'd like you to check out a lot of things, because I'm looking for a long-term relationship. It's going to take a couple of years to get you to where you want to go, and I don't want to spend a couple of years with you if you're not comfortable. Mm-hmm. So this is as important to me as it is to you, because I'm going to have to make a huge investment in you if you're going to get what you want out of this. Mm -hmm. So it's important that every step of the way you verify and confirm everything that we're talking about. So we don't have six months from now where you say, well, if I would have known that, we're not going to have a case of that. We'll take a little extra time up front and make sure that we've dotted the I's and crossed the T's, okay? Okay. And if any time you're not comfortable, all I ask is you tell me. If I can't answer the question, then let's, I just want to wish you the very best and we'll close your file. Okay. Okay. Um, tomorrow, if anything comes up, with all due respect, I'm going to send you all my contact information. Please send me an email if something comes up, because if you're not there tomorrow night when I call, because I'm not a salesman or telemarketer, and we have all this work to do that I'm going to be doing for you, you can understand that I won't call you back. I mean, if, when you have a doctor's appointment, you don't show up. They don't. They don't. All in the email. I think if. Oh yes, yes. Your contact information will be all in the email. Yes, ma'am. You'll have my email address, my phone number, direct line to my office. You'll, you'll even have the address uh, or the the website address of the business I'm working. Uh, that we'll go to eventually where I'll take you through it and show you how to navigate it and how we can use these questions to get you the answers you want so you're not wasting your time. Okay? Okay. Do you have any questions, Barbara? Um, I don't think so at this point, no. I get a sense that you're not real comfortable. Is there anything that you feel we've left out? Well, I obviously don't know anything about the business yet. I don't know what it is, so I can't really judge too much. But, you know, I have to know more about what the business is, what the products are, before I can really... But do you, do you see why we're going slow enough? Do you see why we're going slow enough? So when we do get to that, that you will be comfortable, rather than just jumping into it and you not knowing what's going on, so you back to this, well, it's not believable, again, feeling again? I want to avoid that. Mm -hmm. I want to give you the knowledge... Like when you went in and saw a patient in the hospital, you knew how to recognize when something was wrong because you had all that knowledge to be able to spot, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I want to give you that knowledge up front so you can spot something so you'll know whether or not the decision you made is the best one. Rather than make a decision based upon maybe emotion or the fact that it looks good. That's not... That sounds great. As long as I'm not pressured into... Um, getting going too quickly because, like I said, I want to look around a bit. Have you felt pressured in our conversation tonight? 
No, not so far. Okay, so nothing's going to change. It will be the same tomorrow, and if we talk again, it, it, nothing's going to change. This is the way it is. Mm -hmm. You're in control. Okay. All right? Sounds good. Bless you. I'll see you the same time tomorrow night. You'll have the information from me. And by the way, if you have any questions when you're filling it out or reviewing it, just give me a jingle. I'll be glad to answer them for you. Okay. Okay. Bless you. Good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Bye-bye. Okay. Now, <clears throat> that call was about uh, 19 minutes, everybody. It was a little longer than I would have liked to, but uh, uh, Jamal, uh, Naomi, uh, Barbara... Your opinion is thought too. Who wants to go first and give me your opinion of what we should have asked, what we didn't ask? Um, um, this is Jamal. I'll jump right in. Sure. Um, what, what I liked is, is how you started basically by, uh, you know, finding out the, the interest, her interest in the business, engaging what her interest was initially, and, and from there delving into, you know, what, what the qualifiers were. And also alleviating any concerns and fears she had. You did a great job of breaking down each point she had concerns about whether it was, you know, this is the type of deal that sounds like a, it's a scam, you know, her previous business experiences, how those played into her future decisions, as well as, you know, to answer any questions she had concerning costs and what were the risks and, and alleviating concerns and fears about those. And, and assessing, you know, how she felt about uh, failure, you know, how, how she dealt with it. And just, I mean, in that initial conversation, to find out what their level of interest was and what they're comfortable, you know, what they were comfortable with. Okay. So great job. Does anybody want to comment on the fact that I did not dig deep into her why? And if you recognize that, could anyone give me their opinion as to why I focus so much on the mechanics with this person rather than her emotions? Anybody want to give me their opinion? Sure, John. This is Steve. Oh, Mr. Steve. <laughs> Why well, didn't I know that one? Uh, regulatory situation. I think that you focused on, didn't really dig into the why because she was just looking for something. She said, I'm just looking for something. And I don't know if she really knows what she's looking for. Perfect. Okay. Steve, that's exactly right. It, now, if we can get through the next call, and we're all going to be here when we talk to her next week, you can bet your bottom dollar. I'm going to dig into that why, but right now, I haven't figured out whether or not she wants to play in the sandbox or not. Right. John? Yes? I have a question. Why did why did you give her the price 39 bucks? Why did you do that? Well, it was better than 1995 and no greater than, you know, I just picked a number. Well, why didn't you ask her for permission to send her the information focus on her a little bit more instead of telling her about the $39. Because she asked me a direct question. She's gone. No, no. She is a no-nonsense professional who's worked her whole life in a hospital. She's been beat up by the unions. She's owned her own business. When this lady asks a question, Will, she wants an answer. And if you don't get it, that's worse than anything else in her life. She expects an answer. You were chasing her there towards the end? What? Towards the end, it, it kind of sounded like you were starting to chase her, and she was pulling away towards the end when she started offering a lot of resistance. I was hoping that I could get some kind of a commitment from her to go beyond that of a tire kicker. Okay. Okay, and in, in chasing her, if you want to call it that, I prefer to call it more qualifying, more clarifying, and more confirming, because I'm not even sure that she would want a business if it, under any circumstances. So, I agree with that. So, so because because I don't know what's going to happen, and I'm not sure this lady knows either what she's going to do. I was trying to get her to realize what she's doing. Are you really committing to another meeting? Do you realize what we're going to do? Is, are these benefits going to work for you? Mm -hmm. I was trying to get her to say to herself, Will, to sell herself on why she should show up rather than me being stood up the next time. Okay. That's why I was making all that effort. It wasn't for me. It was for her to hear the sound of her own voice as to why she's doing this. That makes sense. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts? 
you you took the business away and you took the call away and you took the support away so many times throughout the call and I think that you did that because you weren't getting the warm and fuzzies from her. Yes. And why do you think we something that I noticed. What do you why do you think we did that, Naomi? In your opinion. Because you don't you're not they borrowing and stealing here. If you can't see the value of what I have then go someplace else. It's okay. That's right. Did you did did the posture make anybody uncomfortable that it was like it's okay, Barbara, if this is not for you, I'll be glad to delete your file? Does anybody have a problem with that posture? Okay. Do you think Barbara had a problem with that posture? Barbara can answer, no. Okay. All right. I got the one, the only thing I really understood with this, with Barbara, when she spoke tonight is, is that A, she's a professional, and B, she's no nonsense, and she wants it straight from the shoulder, and she can handle no, because it sounds like she's heard the word no a bazillion times at the hospital. Yeah, I, I thought that her profile is she wants to be in control. Oh, yes. She wants things on the table. Um, and that she's not going to get pushed around. That's right. And she doesn't trust me any more than she does the carnival parker right now, and I've got to earn her trust. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And if I think tomorrow, uh, our call next week of just going over... Uh, can you be successful is going to make her my best buddy. i got another thing coming because it isn't going to happen. It's going to take... Is a new it, document or is it the same one we need? Uh, I'm sorry, what did you say, Naomi? Is that a new document or is that the same one we need? Um, no, it's a new... It, it's, it's a completely reworked document. Can I be successful? It's completely reworked. I know where you're going. I'll make sure you have it tonight. <laughs> So, but the point is, is, does that make sense? What we're, what we're saying here is that we're going to have to work hard to earn this lady's trust because she's been through a lot. And she's not going to take the first thing that comes down the road. She's already made it real clear. Even if she likes what we're doing, she's still going to shop somebody else just to make sure. Mm -hmm. So the trust, moving her to trust, is going to take a lot of work. Now, she's also the type of lady that if she makes that leap of faith that she comes on board, She'd be a barn burner because she doesn't scare and she doesn't quit. You can tell that right now. You couldn't ask for a better team member, but you're going to have to earn this one, guys. She's not going to be a pushover. Anybody agree or disagree with that? No, I agree. Okay. I agree. Uh, anybody else have a question before I open it up for our guests? Okay, we're good. I don't have a question. I don't have a question. This is Vanessa, but I do have a comment I wanted to make. I thought that um, <clears throat> the way you were tying everything into her past experience and helping her to be able to relate and make the acknowledgments about that, and just kept reiterating the benefits and how she can um, really relate to that based on her past experience and kept how you kept doing that. I thought that was really great. It helped her to really connect to what you were saying. She could really identify with that. Thank you, Vanessa. And whatever career someone's in, that's not a hard process to do. If they're a school teacher, you know what a school teacher does. They help people, okay? She's a nurse. She helps people. If she's a beautician, you know that she helps people. It's very easy to compare what someone does to transition to use it as an analogy. If you just listen to them, and that's a good observation, young lady. Thanks, Vanessa. You're when you when you see Joe, tell him he's a bad boy for not being on the call. <laughs> okay, there you go. I'll see you all tomorrow. Anybody else have a comment before I open up the call? Okay, here we go. All callers are unmuted. Okay, the floor is open for questions, everybody. Don't be shy. Who wants to go first? Okay. No questions? I've got a question. Go ahead, please. 
Will the process be two, three, four interviews? You won't know that until you get further into it. Yes. Yes. On, on the next call that we do with this, we'll be able to evaluate where we stand and we'll discuss it just like we did on this call. And who knows, this person may um, choose not to proceed or we may disqualify her. Qualify her. I have no idea. The call will have a life of its own. Okay. I have no idea what this person's going to do and she's on this call right now and she's going to tell you that. that I don't want to know what she's going to do. Otherwise, this wouldn't be a valuable training. Is that right, Barbara? That's right. Barbara, I want to really thank you for the wonderful contributions you made tonight. We look forward to taking this to the next level next week. And I want to thank all of you for joining us. Bless you all. Good night, and I'll see you all next week. Thank you, John. Good night, John. Good night everybody. Thank you.